Well, hello again there, YouTube. So it's Petey Two Finger, and this video I got to kind of set this up. So I was checking out some Charles Manson related content. I'm uh, kind of obsessed, I would say, with that case. And I found a channel, Captain Spaulding's Records Revisited. And this guy, Captain Spaulding, minus the U, it's S P. A-L-D, not S-P-A-U. Anyway, Captain Spaulding's Record Revisited had a lot of uh, Charles Manson related content, like uh, book on tape or audio books type stuff. And eventually I ended up over there when he was doing a live stream and I had honestly never seen anything like this. It was like six windows. It was like Hollywood squares, but people who all knew a real lot about music. They were specifically uh, members of a club, which is called the Vinyl Club, I think is what it's called. So there is these Vinyl Club uh, YouTube channels where these people who share similar interests, there seems to be a, a decent number of people who really like the Beatles, which is cool because for me, it all kind of begins and ends with what those guys, four guys did. Everything else is just... Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't want to say that because there's so much music out there. And really, I've only been exposed to a tiny fraction of that. And that's, I think everyone's kind of like that. We all have our own little selective, uh, you know, some people are way better than, than others and they have huge collections of music. That's not me. I'm a really boring music listener. Uh, but I, I, I try to be a little bit more adventurous and expose myself to some different stuff. For a good period of time now my experience specifically with the vinyl club the people were they they were really knowledgeable about music and see this is what i live for i i don't read really but if i if i come across like this is the book that i just bought it's the pink floyd the nick mason he's the drummer from this band and he wrote this book about his uh time uh from the early days to live eight so that's the next book I'm going to be reading. Like I read the There's a Faith No More, Mr. Bungle book. I just read that. I read the Johnny Rotten, No Irish, No, no Blacks, No Irish, No Dogs. I read that. There's a Clash book right now in the restroom. The, you know, No One Here Gets Out Alive. This type of stuff is what I really enjoy. And any story I can pick up when I'm watching YouTube, uh, like interviews with musicians, there's a channel by a guy named of Otis Gibbs. Now he's a Nashville guy, I believe, and he has a lot of different people on who have been around real famous people who a lot of them have passed. And they, they tell like to tell stories. Um, and this is the type of stuff that I really love. So being around knowledgeable people who know much more than I do about recording sessions and engineers and producers and this type of thing, it's fascinating for me. So. I have found a group of people that I am trying to glom onto and convince them that I have some social worth, that I'm, I'm in fact interesting and uh, in doing so I'm really nervous and you know I, I did kind of hang around the peanut gallery for a while before I jumped up and got on video and I tried to do that at the end of the night. Not to like, hey, here's Petey, because once I get going it's very difficult for me to shut the old yammer off. So I know that I've really infuriated a, a lot of the people there and that they can't stand me. They can't stand the sight of me. So this thing is probably, it probably peaked with about three or four instances where I showed up and talked on camera. And now I've completely worn out my welcome and these people are gonna regret the day they ever set eyes on me. Um, today I ran across, I was check, taking a look, there was a guy who was popped up a few times there, who, uh, again, was extremely knowledgeable. I had mentioned something, and he knew all about it, uh, even more than I did, some details. So this guy calls himself, let's see, what's the name of this channel here? Uh, AGK's Vinyl Life. And he has a channel here. There's a video, 10 Questions for Music Lovers. This is my 100th episode and contest, maybe vinyl community 
Now, I've got to say, I, I, uh, I don't know AGK very well, but the little bit of time I spent with him, I admire the guy for his knowledge, extensive knowledge, and like I said, I don't, I only know, uh, like I don't have a big record collection and I don't know a real lot about this stuff, so I am a fish out of water and I'm uh, basically trying to fool these people when I'm in their presence. But they are, they are the type of people that I admire because they're, at heart, they're music people. These are people that love music. And that's the type of people that's, I can really identify with that, you know. So these people, specifically Captain Spaulding, Groovy Lisa, Tim Allen, Hop Frog, uh, people in the Peanut Gallery, Walrus, Gumboot, uh, Nick, all these people that I've met, AGK, Paulina, the Angel of Music, um, Dusty Spins. Dusty is a guy, I believe he lives in California, and he he hosts these music nights where he play, spins 80s stuff. He's got another one he was doing 90s, and I think he's looking to branch out. and Because and, he's doing, I think, two spin nights a week and then a discussion, which is chat, which is supposed to be central to music, but it tends to wander off into television film or, if I'm on there, conspiracy theory. <laughs> if I if I completely take over the discussion and ruin it for everyone. Uh, but the point of this video was I wanted to let you guys know if any of you who watch my stuff, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you should check this stuff out. Captain Spaulding's Records Revisited uh, and Dusty Spins. Now, Dusty Spins does have a YouTube channel. But he also uh, really likes people over on Twitch. So I signed up for a Twitch account. Hopefully, I would love to see some of you guys that I talk to in the comment section over there. Uh, I know you, if you're fans of good music, you would love this type of content because I enjoy it. So with all that being said, I thought I would go for the AGK Vinyl Life, AGK's Vinyl Life, 10 questions for music lovers. I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to take a sip. How often, number one, how often do you listen to music? When, where, and for how long? Well, uh, <laughs> the last two days we went on a nature walk and I used this portable device with this uh, battery pack and we listened to Adrian Blue's 25th uh, solo solo album Elevator. Typically I will listen to music here with uh, headphones on. We live in an apartment. I got this uh, Superlux headphone obsession. I've got four pairs of Superlux headphones. I like to use an amplifier when I listen to music on headphones. So like here is one of my homemade amps and it's built with lithium ion rechargeable batteries and a little amplifier board that I got from eBay China for $3.50. Um, we a lot of the times I am that I am doing my music it'll be my original stuff because I put together drums with synthesizers and sound effects for the duo that my wife and I play in which is just for fun. Uh, but that's consumed quite a bit of my time in my life and I've written uh, over 500 pieces. Now, I do ha uh, have my favorite, you know, commercial music. Uh, I listen, uh, we have a, a couple of radios in the restroom. One of them will tell you the name of the artist and, and the, uh, the band and, and the song will come through on a scroll which is really cool. So of course in the vehicle, if I'm ever traveling in the restroom and then uh, really uh, on YouTube a lot in the past however many years, you know, since 2006, I listened to a lot of music on YouTube. So uh, on the radio, I listen to WXRT in Chicago, which is like alternative kind of. Uh, they play a lot of stuff that Dusty spins. Plays. 
it's just good music but it's you know chicago used to have more rock stations before evergreen media kind of took over the radio um we lost the loop 97.9 which was man that hurt that hurt the loop was a good station but i mean i remember z rock <laughs> playing the heavy metal stuff and WMET playing hard rock back in the, in the late 70s. So as far as streaming services, really minimal contact with that. Uh, physical media, compact discs, but back in the day, cassettes. So uh, as far as radio and streaming, again, I've, I've done Spotify. Uh, I've done SoundCloud and Sound. Um, you know, these instances where it's like... Um, some of the even older ones, but uh, and I, and I, I, it's escaping me now. It's not SoundCloud. SoundClick. <laughs> you remember SoundClick? I've got a SoundClick page. But that WXRT is awesome, and they're still around. And it's generally the same people that I've kind of grown up with, uh, like Lynn Bramer. Uh, what's her name on XRT? Terry uh, Hammer. Terry, Terry Hammer, yeah. And who are some of the other DJs? Besides Lynn Bramer. And Marty Lennertz. Marty Lennertz, the regular Johnny guy. Mars Johnny Mars. Johnny Mars. Uh, Frank E. Lee or something Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. I don't even know if they're all still on. So. Physical media. What year did you buy your first piece of physical media? When would I have been in sixth grade? I stole a cassette of Pink Floyd The Wall from Venture. Venture was the store where I met my wife. We, I, I got a job working as a <laughs> as a security guard, a door guard there. And 1979? Yeah, it was maybe 79. The, 79. the wall, Right when the wall came out, I stole a cassette copy of it because I didn't need no education. And I brought that tape in to my, I was at a, like this weird cultish church that my parents went to. And uh, it was a private school, but not like, not like a private school where it's like really expensive. It was just weird and not many kids. It was like about 50 kids in the whole school. No exaggeration there. It was, it was less than 50 kids. And that place was called Agape. But I remember playing that cassette. The teacher, Kevin Kircher, left, and I put it in the deck and played it. And then Lisa Williams, her dad was the pastor that ran the place. She told on me. And Kevin was like, I trusted you for five minutes. <laughs> and, of course, I... I went and played it, and I remember playing it from the helicopter, you know. He's got that echo on his voice uh, that kind of comes back around at you, you know, happiest days of our lives, Roger Waters. <laughs> so, yeah, that was The Wall was my first piece of physical media, and I replaced that tape. I actually purchased one from Venture because that tape was like a 90 minute tape and I had a boom box that the motor uh, it used to munch 90 minute tapes so um, yeah he's got the example of 1991 Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon on CD that's pretty good pretty good example uh, physical media what forms of physical media do you own and which do you have the most of so I've got uh, I've got vinyl uh, I've got a lot of Harry, Harry Nelson, pretty much like all of the Nelson on vinyl. I've got uh, Pink Floyd vinyl. <laughs> and that was all I listened to for about 10 years was Pink Floyd. My, my father passed away when I was 15, right before my 16th birthday. And so that the wall like really had an impact on me, you know. And not shortly after that, I saw uh, Roger Waters for solo tour on a hit of Black Dove LSD. So that really knocked me out of the park. It's interesting because I have tickets for his upcoming show, and it's 38 years to the date. And uh, I just met somebody, a Lithuanian guy. I ran into this guy, and he blessed me with some most holy sacraments. So we're going <laughs> to... We're going to see, uh, it ought to be a, a special, special concert, a day to remember for PD. So yeah, I, I've got uh, a lot of cassettes. Cassettes were my jam using an EQ, and I know people say, oh, they don't sound good. Well, I used an EQ. I used to go to the library a lot and get the compact discs and burn them to high bias tapes. 
and burn them hot to the tape and then use the Dolby but not engage the Dolby for playback and use an EQ with a smile curve with a good set of headphones and it it sounded good to me especially with with the CD the CD sound is, was even better than the cassette but there's something about the cassette that I, I really didn't mind at all if you if you, if you did it right like I said uh, with a, uh, a good quality high bias cassette um, eight track mm, no no eight track eight track sounded really poor audio quality in my opinion but uh, CD, I've got a good, good amount of CDs. I joined one of those uh, WMG Music Club, and that exposed me to some stuff that I never would have run into, uh, like Primus. Uh, I would have found out about them later, but I got in early on Primus because of that. And also Mr. Bungle, which was, I was a big Faith No More fan. And uh, Mr. Bungle ended up being a band that really expanded some ideas about music for me and that was just because of that uh, WMG music group and that first Mr. Bungle album it took a long time for me to for it to click with me and specifically music that does take a long time or doesn't hit me right away and I'll force myself to listen to it for three or four days in a row because I know the reputation of the artist that music when it does hit me it hits me like a train and then it it has a uh, repeat replay value which um, lasts a lot longer than the music that I hear that will be appealing the first time which might wear out a lot quicker so I, I have to try to keep that in my mind to be like don't be afraid to force yourself to listen to it even if it if you don't like it so much at first you know but that isn't always the case I mean if it's if it's crappy music you know I mean, music is subjective, and that's the beauty of it. But when you get to certain things, it's like you can throw the subjectivity out of the window if we're talking about, you know, disposable, like really the, the stuff that really sells, the stuff that's really popular, is very difficult for me to listen to. So, and, you know, that's not, I'm not saying that, oh, I have better taste or anything. It's just, it's just who I am, and... I almost wish that I could fit in and just listen to what's on the radio or what's popular, what's in the top, and like fit in with everybody. Like I wish I could comprehend sports and be one of the boys and join in and you know all the macho stuff because <laughs> that's uh, it just doesn't. I don't. I don't understand any of that. So the form of physical media that I listen to the most nowadays is probably uh mp3 320 you know um and then, but honestly my own stuff which i i ripped to 320 mp3 and every year in january i live in chicago so it's nasty here you know the, with the winter so i'll do uh I, I have herniated this so i don't get around very well mostly here on this couch so i record music in january and I have uh, 10 uh, CDs worth of like solo disc. I mean, they're not real albums, but I record, you know, 10 to 35 songs and call it an album. And I've been doing that for a while. So that stuff, I listen to that uh, decent amount, but like the stuff that I play uh, for the duo, I listen to a lot. Putting it together and then rehearsing it because we play here often. My wife and I have a couple areas where um, I'll use an SD card for the drums and then there'll be a mixer and some headphone amps and some equalizers and we run, uh, we can jam in the apartment and nobody can hear it. So especially like let's say this year I finished the album in January and then I wrote 22 more pieces, well 18 because four of them were off the album. But we were rehearsing that new stuff, um, so I was hearing it quite a bit, quite a bit. And now we know it. <laughs> so it's time for us to go out into the wild and perform that on a battery operated PA that we built. And I filmed that in HD and upload that to my channel. So that's fun. And it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a, like a, we're trying to, you know, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I, I get maybe three comments. And that's fine. That's fine. 
you know, it, it's there for me to go back and watch us perform. It's there for posterity's sake. My favorite genres of music, rock, uh, hard rock, I like a lot. Heavy metal, eh, some of it's good. I like a band called Raven. Uh, I'm not a big Metallica guy. I, honestly, I would pick maybe Megadeth and Slayer out of the top. I, I, Anthrax is, is interesting, and f they have more of a sense of humor. Um, alternative, yep. Jazz, a little bit, a little bit. Funk, a little bit. R&B, eh, not so hot. I mean, I listened to Nina Simone album today. Nina Simone's greatest hits, and that was fantastic. And if we're talking about like James Brown at the Tammy Show, that type of R&B, oh yeah, I'm down with it. But if we're talking about more modern stuff, no thank you. But uh, I, I also, I like weird stuff, you know. Um, And, and even even like if you look up the weirdest bands and go through that, like some of it to me doesn't even really seem that weird. It really doesn't. But uh, live music, what was your first large concert venue and what's the next you plan to go to? If you've ever have never been, who would you like to see? Oh, I saw the Rolling Stones Steel Wheel, Wheel Tour in 1989 and in living, living, not in, living color opened up for them. Uh, live music, the first large venue concert was Beatlemania at the Blackstone Theater, but really Roger Waters, pros and cuts, hitchhiking. 84, July 26th at the Rosemont Horizon. Uh, and Eric Clapton was playing guitar. The next I plan to go to, Roger Waters, and it's 38 years to the date. It's July 26th at the United Center, the this is not a drill tour but i'm also i got tickets for adrian Ballou, who we've seen probably the most i would say who do you think i saw the most live Ballou? yeah yeah blue or this band the psycho dots which that blue adrian had a band with these guys from cincinnati who were called the raisins who had regional head they used to play the chitlin circuit and those guys are motherfuckers. They're real, like the guitar player, the bass player, and the drummer. They had a trio called Psycho Dots, and they put out a handful of albums. Rob Fetters is the guitar player. He's unbelievable guitar player. Unbelievable. And he writes really in that like melancholy vein, like kind of sad stuff, a lot of uh, dealing with like addiction and broken heart stuff. But uh, man, I love that music. I really do. And Adrian Ballou's music brought hope into my life in a time of despair when I was listening to Pink Floyd for so long. So, yeah, I'm going to see uh, Waters again. It'll be his farewell tour, supposedly. If, if I don't get to see him again, it'll be a neat bookend of 38 years to the date. Kind of neat. And uh, like I said, I had done Black Dove LSD at that first show. I was 16. My dad had just kind of died. And uh, someone recently, I just met this guy. He's from Europe. I ran into him a couple times in a resale store, and then he had mentioned he had a guitar that needed repair, so I invited him over, and we fixed his guitar, and then my wife and I played about an hour set for him, and we were talking, and this guy's really into, like, really positive spirituality and all this. Like, he's just an amazing guy. Like, I never met anybody like this. Like, I, I would say almost Christ-like. But yeah, he was like, would you want to come and see where I stay, which is in my hometown? And I was like, sure, let's go over there and check it out. So I went there and uh, I'll just say that he gifted me something, some sacrament, something very special. So it's going to be interesting uh, when I see Roger Waters coming up. Also, I have tickets for a band called Aristocrats, Aristocrats, which is Marco Miniman on drums. Jamie, what's his name? Be is it Beller, something Beller? Uh, yeah, and then the guitar player is Guthrie Govan, Guthrie Govan, uh, Englishman. Brian Beller. Brian Beller. Be Beller. Beller, yeah. He, Beller played with Steve Vai and Metapocalypse or Death Clock, if you remember that. And then uh, Marco Miniman has played with all kinds of people, and he's really, we've seen him live. He's unbelievable drummer. And Guthrie Govan, Guthrie Govan, Guthrie Govan, some people say, 
he is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Now, the person who I regret not seeing is not David Gilmore, because I saw his Pink Floyd four times. The person who I regret not seeing is Frank Zappa. So I've got Dweezil on my list and Steve Vai is on my list. And when I see those two guys, I think I can check everything off of my list. So if I had to bring one artist back from the dead, it would be John Lennon. Uh, I think that I think that I, I mean I, it's it's like no contest, John Lennon. And he was his life was cut short way too soon, and it would have been interesting to see what would have happened when he when he matured. If he could have gotten away from certain things in his life, I think we're really holding him back creatively. I think, you know, maybe he was dealing with some addiction issues and that John Lennon had a lot of issues himself, which is what made him so interesting. But uh, I mean, it's it's just like that immediate thing that comes to mind. Uh, but then, you know, you think consider bringing back somebody like Bach or Beethoven. I, I mean, I don't know. I, that's that's a trick question, but it's it's a great question, and I have I have a hard time answering it. But John Lennon was the first thing that popped in my mind, so we're gonna go with John Lennon. Look into Jose Perdomo. He was the doorman. He was there when John Chapman took John Lennon's life. Um, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't say his name. I'm supposed to call him Dick in the Mouth or what? Anything but his real name. But look into Jose Perdomo. It's interesting. So, yes, last question, number 10. If you could only hear one last song in your life, what would it be? It would be Merry Go Bye Bye, which is the last track on Mr. Bungle's sophomore release, Disco Volante. All right. Thank you very much for joining me on this one. And a special thanks goes out to AGK's Vinyl Life and, of course, uh, Tim Allen, Hot Frog, uh, Paulina Angel of Music, Tim Allen, did I mention you already? Dusty Spins. Groovy Lisa and Captain Spaulding. Thank you guys so much for uh, letting me uh, come in and ruin your streams. I will see you guys around and peace.